guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. So in this video, we're going to do another houseplant tour video, but it's a different kind of houseplant. It's not my houseplants, it's this guy's houseplants. You guys know him, the OG plant guy, Daryl from Houseplant Journal. What's up, Christian? What's going on, Daryl? Thank you for doing this. I'm so excited about this. Now, I've been following you for a while now, and uh, you have been one of those guys who, uh, first of all, has a lot of beautiful plants, but also you have a certain way of uh, taking care of them and at least teaching them. And I think that's what your content is about, right? That's right, yeah. So I've been, uh, I guess, on Instagram for almost like five years now. Okay. And uh, it's kind of all led up to the point of writing my own book, which, uh, you know, I got a copy for you soon. Oh my God, thank <laughs> you. So this is uh, the new plant parent? The new plant parent, okay. yes. And you know, we're, what it's really all about is like, when I first read about plant care, it just felt like we were trying to take care of decor that needed maintenance, right? But I really see plants as, as being more than that. Like, you know, they're our friends. They're, they're green friends. They're that, living things. They're living things yeah. that grow. Yeah. And you know, sometimes they die, right? And so I wanted to write a book that was a bit more uh, trying to help people have a relationship with their plants, right? I know, you know, sounds a little crazy. No, but I, but I think I think today's people who are buying plants are looking for that more deeper, meaningful relationship. I agree. Right? And I agree. And you know what I, I found? Because uh, I agree with you that when I first started uh, liking plants, it was more to just add a decor in my home, right? I, I never really thought about it in a way where, you know, this is now my responsibility to take <laughs> care of it. And as I began to obviously fall in love with them, I realized that I do like taking care of them. And, and for the most part, you know, most beginners don't really know how to take care of them. So I think this is what this book will show. Mm -hmm. Excited about that. But uh, yeah, so also if you're not following him on Instagram and on uh, YouTube, be sure to do it. House Plant Journal. He's got a Channel. I'm gonna be on his channel soon, so we're gonna do a collab video. And uh, but yeah, so we're gonna do a husband tour of his plants. And uh, without further ado, let's get it started. Sure. So we'll get started on this side. Uh, Daryl, what kind of plants you got going on here? So up here, I have some cuttings that have now rooted nicely with. Uh, so these are Cebu Blue. Pothos. Pothos, wow. Yeah. Man, I've always wanted to get one of these. And where did you get them? Uh, so I got them from the Markham Plant Swap. Okay. Uh, it was a, a gift from My Plant Album. Like, that's her IG mm -hmm. account name. And uh, yeah, the, the Markham Plant Swap is a great, great event that's run by Home by Faith or Jackie Sang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, if you ever check out uh, that plant swap. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, plant swaps are awesome. Uh, it's a great way to obviously uh, grow your plant collection and uh, meet new people as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here we got, uh, th this is actually two pots here, okay. two two pots of uh, philodendron. Uh, Brazil, Brazil. nice. Yeah. So nice they've been going kind of crazy here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. going here. And uh, we got some mycans cuttings, philodendron mycans. Okay. Yeah, a little bit, uh, I think that may be ravaged by thrips sometimes, but uh, yeah, I'm still doing that to nice. pest control stuff. <laughs> yeah, like every plant parent goes through. Yeah. <laughs> And they got some money trees here. Mm. Yeah, money trees. Yeah. So something that's interesting about these ones is that they're not the typical like four braided ones. Okay. Look at how these ones are maybe a little bit uh, like three braided. Three. Well, they're just kind of like twisted together. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And you got them going on in this uh, rack against this wall with this lighting. How'd you do this? So this uh, this actually I can just show you this whole thing here. These is a very cool like modular system. Okay. So this, these are the shelves, and they just hook onto this grid. Mm -hmm. And this grid is, uh, I think, normally for retail stores if they want to do uh, shelving for different stuff. Right. So I happened to get one of these, and the way that they are lit, let me just put this back on. Okay. You got the lighting. Uh, yeah, there. the lighting setup. So here I have two T5 LED lights and they're uh, 5,000 Kelvin color temperature, um, just because then that's mm -hmm. uh, a, nice, a nice white color. Mm -hmm. uh, and because this thing up here is like a vent, you can't like drill into it, right? So what I did was I just took a piece of wood and then used some double-sided foam tape, stick it to the, to the mm -hmm. vent, and now I can drill the little mounts from the, from the lights into the wood. And because they're pretty light, I mean lightweight, right. so they they don't they don't, they're not going to crash your ground. Exactly, they're not going to hit your head when you're sitting down. Yeah, exactly. that's cool. Yeah, good setup, man. And uh, what do you have over here on this side? Some cuttings. Yes. So sometimes a leaf falls off. I just uh, 
take it and put it into the. So that's a pilia, right? Pilia, yeah. Yeah. And it's rooted, but I don't know if it's going to actually grow, grow into a new plant. stem. But either way, I just kind of leave it here. Mm -hmm. Then uh, some. This is uh, called satin pothos or silver philodendron. Mm -hmm. uh, not doing so well right now. <laughs> uh, so yes, yeah, and more philodendron silver. Okay. And these are sitting inside a. Cradle by Hilton Carter. Oh, nice. Is yeah. that his thing? Yeah, this is his yeah. thing. Yeah. Alrighty. And then here, very important, always know your temperature and humidity. And it's some something interesting because, you know, for, throughout my entire winter, I could see that it was no more than like 30%. Okay. And I don't use humidifiers, I don't miss anything. Right. It's like everything was generally fine. Even some ma uh, made in hair ferns, which I show you, I'll show you later. Okay. You got this huge um, silver satin again? Yeah, yeah, so that's where the rest of the plant is. And yeah, most, nicely most of it's down. up here. <laughs> got some like kind of scraggly vines that come all the way down here. Yeah. That's normal though, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you got this beautiful uh, philodendron here that's mm, climbing so up the wall. Yep, it <laughs> starts all the way down there, as you can see in the pot. Mm -hmm. And at first, it only came up to like maybe halfway of the mirror. So like maybe up to here. Right. Let's see. My hand. Yeah, <laughs> here. And then yeah, it just kept going. And the, at first I had to affix them to the wall using some little 3M hooks mm -hmm. and even some tape. Uh, but eventually some of the vines actually took root against the wall. Yeah. So maybe if we can like kind of zoom in maybe here and show you one of these, they're actually they're actually against the wall. Nice. Okay. Look at that. And I see here you got a fiddly leaf fig. Yeah, so this is our, our first fiddle leaf fig, and it's one of these kind of smaller ones, so you can see like my hand is like, mm -hmm. it's like that. And I find that they're nice and compact, so nice and manageable. Right. Lots uh, of snake plants. That's a Sansuaria, snake plants. Yeah, that, I need to repot that one. You can see it's so thin because it's actually really dry. And I think the root system might be a little damaged. Okay, so that's how kind of you can tell when it needs to be repotted. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And then you got one of these guys. Yes, the Monstera. You know, I'm going to bring it out for yeah. you here. Yep, variegated Monstera or, or the Thai, Thai constellation. Monstera. Yep. Now, what are these? Um, is that sunburn or? No, so this is a uh, thrips damage. You can okay. see also here like this. So unfortunately, uh, thrips kind of took over a lot of my plants, I think like last starting last year sometime. Okay. And um, yeah, so I've been like kind of washing them off whenever I see them. Um, yeah, but you know, they, they damage the leaves and that's kind of the unfortunate reality. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think as every plant parent, you know, we, we, we deal with a lot of plant pests and uh, you know, there's uh, obviously ways to get rid of them and ways to manage them. Uh, but I think uh, the key is just accepting the fact that it's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, obviously uh, our goal is to always try and make sure our plants are nice and healthy. And what's this guy right here? Uh, this one here is a griffin begonia. Uh, begonias are beautiful. Yeah. And this is actually, so if you, you look, there's like, there's these two stems. Mm -hmm. And so, so these two stems actually came from the mother plant, which uh, if you want to swing over that way to the, to the table, I can show you the mother plant. What's this guy right here? Yeah. You want, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it out and then, uh, This way. So this is your mother plant. Uh, the mother plant for the actually this sorry this is not called Griffin. This is called um, Lady Vanderwilt. Like that's okay. that's the actual cult of our name. Um, yeah, and it, like it's so the really interesting thing about these uh, cane type begonias are if you look down here, you can see that this is like where they were cut before, right? Okay. So. If you really follow this stem, you can see it was cut once here, it kept growing here, 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 and then I cut it again, and then it just keeps growing like this. So, like the life cycle of this plant is that it'll eventually grow really like tall and thin, where mm -hmm. most of the bottom leaves have fallen off. Mm -hmm. But then you just cut it, and you and it promotes you, new growth. Yeah, you get new growth from the mother plant, and the, the part that you cut off can be propagated, which is what I just showed you earlier. Nice. And so that's how you just keep the plant going. Nice. 
Would you say that's um, common uh, for most plants to promote growth when you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, we, we saw some money trees earlier. I like I do the same thing with that. I'll show you one uh, soon mm -hmm. where like yeah, you you just they grow to a point where maybe they're a bit unmanageable, right? Um, or maybe they've dropped a lot of their lower leaves and they look kind of weird, all like naked at the bottom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so you, you just cut it back and maybe repot at the same time, and that that will kind of stimulate the roots to take up some new nutrients and push out new growth because it knows that it's not photosynthesizing it's got no leaves right right so it'll it'll push out uh, new growth you know presumably as long as your roots are healthy then the plant should continue growing nice i, I noticed this huge air plant what is this ah so this one is called a capitata peach mm -hmm. so talansia capitata peach and i can take this thing out is. yeah like this is even bigger than a lot of ze like zero graphicas. Oh wow! So, and uh, so that a little, is that a flower? A bloom? Yeah, this so this bloom came out about a year ago, mm -hmm. and so after the blooms come out, then the mother plant itself, which is this whole thing, stops growing, okay. and then you can see the little babies come out from the sides. Okay, can you see the baby here? Oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. So it's actually quite big. It's not a okay. baby anymore, but yeah. So there's one there, okay. and there's one here. Nice. And you can just uh, remove that and, and so have it on its own, or I've never removed a baby from from like this type of air plant. Like the ones I normally do are like you know kaput medusae, like the bulb kind right. of ones. And those ones are easy to separate. You just rip them off, right? Okay. But these guys that grow like within the foliage of the other ones, I don't know how to how to remove this. I guess when they get big enough, I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. And uh, you got this uh, sansevieria right here. Yeah, so that one is, I can't remember if this one's called like starfish or something. Or That's a samurai right there. Yeah, this that is a samurai, samurai. Yeah. Very, very sharp. <laughs> and this one, yeah, I kind of forgot the name. It's not really the starfish. And no, it's not either. I forgot what it is. If you guys know, comment below and uh, let us know. See, even us guys don't even know some of these names. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, not knowing the name is not a huge deal. As long as exactly. you know it's a snake plant, then you just take care of it the same way. Just like a regular <laughs> snake plant, absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. And Underneath there, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so this is actually now, if you if you zoom out a bit, this is like inside my, or zoom out, this is inside oh, the table. That's inside the table. Yeah, yeah so right. I can just, under here, it's on like a little, on a little tray. Okay. And then it's, yeah. So these are, uh, again, a different type of satin pothos. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you sometimes get a few of these yellow leaves. So when should you rip off yellow leaves? Because I often get that question. Whenever you tug at them gently and they can come off. Okay. So here's another one. This one's probably not ready yet. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'll, and leave, I'll wait. And yellow leaves is natural, right? Like, you know, oftentimes people say, you know, how, why am I getting all these yellow leaves? But it's yeah, a like natural so, part of the So what's, happening, what's actually happening underneath is the chlorophyll is getting broken down by the plant. The plant is saying, okay, it's like this leaf, I need the nutrients out of here so that I can push out some new growth towards mm -hmm. the front. And so it's breaking down the chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the green part of plants. And what you're seeing, this yellow, like this color yellow, is the color of uh, the other pigments that are in leaves, like carotenoids. That's why, you know, in the fall, our leaves turn yellow and red because mm -hmm. those carotenoids, they, they can't be broken down, so they stay in the leaf and then yeah, once the once they've salvaged all the nutrients, then that's why I was able to just pluck this leaf off, right? Because then it's, it's done salvaging the nutrients, and the plant keeps growing. Nice. Okay. Good. And you got these guys right here. Mm -hmm. So this one, look at the tall guy here. Mm -hmm. So the Dracaena. Dracaena. Okay. I call this one Marge. It looks like you know her hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, oh, I'll just show you this little Haworthia here. These uh, cathedral window Haworthia. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We got an orchid here. This orchid is my like uh, just recovered out of mealybug oh, infestation. Wow. Really? And you can see that and there's blooms coming in. Yeah. There's new. There's a new set of blooms coming in. Mm -hmm. So like when I bought it, obviously it had the blooms on it. Then after about like a month, they all fell off. So then what you do is you just cut the the stem okay. where the where the old blooms were okay and if the plant still has uh, energy then it'll push out a new set of blooms from nice. the old stem okay cool what's underneath there you got so bird's nest fern 
birth nest fur. This one here is birth nest fur. Okay, it almost looks like um, the one that everyone has. The crispy wave one? Yeah. Yeah, that, that one I've seen a lot in, in grocery stores, but yeah. I, I, I haven't seen it do too well indoors, so okay. not really sure. And then that, that one's like this one, one, yeah. right? Yeah. Sometimes you can just look at the leaf and just give it a name, and that's probably the common name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then you got one of these guys. Yes, yeah. the Hoya. Carry eye, yeah. yeah. So it's a uh, variegated kind. The variegated one. Oh wow, it's nice and uh, it's actually like the full vine. Yeah, you got full vine on it. And but but don't get me wrong. When I bought I bought this almost like two years ago. Okay. And the only leaves it's given me are the, like these new ones. Really? You can, you can tell so that it's, it's been, different. Yeah, from, it's been it's a slow grower, I guess. Very slow. Very slow. Okay. So, you know, for, for those plants um, that, you know, we typically get and we're like, why is it not growing? That's kind of common, I guess, in certain plants. That, yeah, that some, some plants are just tend to be slow. And also, you know, your indoor light is just way less than what a nursery mm -hmm. can give. So, you know, you can't expect it to grow as fast exactly. as a nursery. And what's this guy right here? This is a beauty right here. It's a fern, right? Yeah, so this is a rabbit's foot fern. Rabbit's foot fern. Let's show you guys here. So... It's in this uh, coffee pot that, uh, you know, no drainage holes and it's, it's pure sphagnum moss. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's been growing like this for about three years. Um, hey, let me show you what it looked like from the book. Okay. So you've had this for three years now uh, and it has always been planted in uh, sphagnum moss? Yeah, so I, what I did was I took the, uh, let's find a page here, rabbit's foot fern, this should be under R. Here we go. So this is like from the book, mm -hmm. and it's like that's why. Like so, this one is the same plant here. Let me see if I have the steps. Oh yeah, here it is. So it started off as like a regular potted plant like this. Okay, wow. And then I took it out, and you see that, you know, the the rabbit's feet, or they actually more, look more like spider feet, and they they come off the side. So you just kind of like loosen out the old uh, soil. Okay. And then I made a bed of sphagnum moss inside the. Mm -hmm. It's a pot, and I just kind of plopped it right in. And then this is a much older picture. You can see there's a lot fewer legs. Right. And um, yeah, so then you, you just you just uh, put it in the bright and direct light, and then I just kind of lift the pot. And if it's well, actually, you don't have to lift it. You can just look at the exactly. outside and see and if it's dry beans. or whatever. Yeah. Right. So once it's almost completely dry, I just take it over to the sink, pour in some water, mm -hmm. approximately like a third of the volume of, of this uh, pot. Okay. And then, yeah, you can just That's see it just so keeps cool. growing, keeps growing. You can look look underneath, you can even see... Uh, it's just like a tarantula legs. Kind of, yeah. Right. <laughs> some, some people, some of your uh, arachnophobic friends might not right, like this right. part of the video. But uh, no, this is pretty cool, I like this. Unfortunately, some of the legs like grow on the inside. Okay. And, you know, they're basically stuck in there. Okay. They're like going like, all the way around almost. Right. But I'm going to unpot this and maybe redo it to some mm -hmm. different type of potting. But yeah, this is one, definitely like one of my favorite plants. Nice. Pretty cool. Alrighty. And then you got another thing begonia right there. Yeah, so this one, I think it's often called like vine begonia. Okay. But it's actually called Sissus discolor. Okay. It's kind of a weird name. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I was doing a time lapse. Because if you look over to this side, how oh, wow, look at that. Curled, like look how it curled around mm -hmm. the, the, the stand here. The stand. So, yeah, when I noticed it one time curling around something else, I said, hey, maybe I'll take a look and see how it does it, you know, in real time. Pretty good. More air plants? Yeah, so these are just like a, a couple baskets of air plants. Um, up here we have the tectorums that are like the really fuzzy ones. Mm -hmm. Then middle here's just some other random ones. Cool. All right, so on this side, what do we have here, Daryl? So we got here a Calathea. I don't even really know exactly what type it is, but okay. it's a pretty nice this one. It's part of it's the Stramate family. Or it could be that yeah. too, yeah. yeah. They're all in the Marantaceae family. Exactly. Uh, here is a, this is a Philodendron Moonlight. Oh, wow, this is a beautiful one. I got a small one of these at home, but this is, this is yeah, look at this. Got it quite, quite big. Nice. At that and then uh, this seems to be like the kind of lime theme here this yeah. is a philodendron lemon lime oh so this is the lemon lime one yeah so you can see that it's kind of the leaves are a bit bigger than mm -hmm. let's say if you look down here I have the actual like uh, philodendron neon 
Okay, then the young. Yeah. yeah so then it's. Uh, so these are, are generally much smaller. Which is the slightly shape. different from the neon pothos, right? Yeah, neon pothos. Yeah. Let, me, let me bring it over for you. This, this is the neon pothos. Uh, you got, there, you guys can see the difference on the, sh the way the leaves are shaped yeah. differently. Pothos have a little bit of a, a, like a... Like a pattern on it or like a... A little bit of rough pattern on yeah. it. And then the philodendrons are, are smoother. Smoother, more hard shaped. Okay, okay, so that's how you can tell the difference. I see here you got whale fin. Oh, no, that, that one's, that's the, the, what's the moonlight? Is it also moonlight? Oh, yeah, yeah the moonshine one? Moonshine. Moonshine, yes, yes, you're right. Uh, curly spider plant. Mm -hmm. And what's this guy right here? Ah, that is a uh, leopard lily. A leopard lily? Yeah. That's pretty cool. You got your pelia right here. Nice. And you have it on this cart now. I know living in a condo sometimes, you know, space is very limited. Yeah, so when space is limited, also the other thing is uh, you have to let people come and service the, uh, the the vent thing. So that's why I put it on this cart so that I can just move it away. And wheel it around. And then like those service people can come and do the, nice. the servicing. Good stuff. But other than that, normally lives, of course, as close to the window as possible. So that's where it lives normally. Nice. Oh yeah, and I said I would show you the maiden hair ferns. So I've got two different ones here. Look at this like really super tiny one. This is uh, What kind is this one? Yeah, it's common name is called like little lady. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the the, the botanical the, name. Botanical name. Oh, so light. Yeah, super yeah. light. And then the other one, which is the regular one, is this huge one. What's the secret of uh, making sure your ferns are nice and healthy? Because I don't have a fern because I'm scared of... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like the, the real secret is to know how many leaves are supposed to fall off. Because if you look down here, look, I've got all this brown stuff here, right? Mm -hmm. But I know this plant's not dying because I can see lots of new growth coming out here, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. And, and so the real secret is, number one, light. So I put it right beside the window. This thing even gets like two or three hours of direct sun. Mm -hmm. And then the second part is to make sure that this soil never gets even like partially dry. Okay. So the moment I touch this or if I lift it and it's like even slightly lighter than fully saturated, okay. then you I take it to the sink and soak it again. Nice. And that happens now because of summer it's happening every like maybe four or five days okay but in the winter i could probably wait a little longer but the point is you know i'm always checking it cool yeah good stuff righty all right there you guys have it hopefully you enjoyed this little house plant tour video of his plants and again if you're not following him on youtube or instagram be sure to follow the house plant journal because i'm going to be on his channel soon and i'm excited to do that uh, also if you want a copy of his book i'm going to put a link in the description below be sure to get one other than that thank you so much for yeah, doing this for sure. and uh hopefully you guys enjoy your weekend and we'll see you guys soon peace